Joel 23. Wonderful book of the Bible, great book, experientially, spiritually, great book. Doctrinally, of course, speaks by type of the persecution of the nation of Israel in the time of Jacob's trouble, some really good practical stuff, some very deep stuff as well in the book of Job, but it's in a very practical, spiritual sense. I want to come at this chapter. Well, really, kind of just one main verse uh, tonight, Job 23. Uh, Job chapter 23, but we'll, we'll read the uh, chapter in its entirety. It's only 17 verses. Job chapter 23, commencing at verse number one, the word of God says, Then Job answered and said, Even today is my complaint a bit. My stroke is heavier than my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. I would order my cause before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would know the words which he would answer me and understand what he would say unto me. Will he plead against me with his great power? No, but he would put strength in me. There the righteous might dispute with him, so I should be delivered forever from my judge. Behold, I go forward, but he is not there. And backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand that I cannot see him. But he knoweth the way that I take when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. My foot hath held his steps, his way have I kept and not declined. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips, I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. But he is in one mind, and who can turn him? And what his soul desireth, even that he doeth. For he performeth the thing that is appointed for me, and many such things are with him. Therefore am I troubled at his presence when I consider I am afraid of him. For God maketh my heart soft, and the Almighty troubleth me. Because I was not cut off before the darkness, neither hath he covered the darkness from my face. And we'll end our reading there. And I do hope and pray that you might be familiar with the book of Job in here tonight. If you're not, can I recommend to you as a Christian that you work that into your reading schedule early. It is an incredible, incredible book to read, but it has some great practical application. If we go through times of trial, trouble, and great difficulty, Job is a, is a very present help indeed in a time of need, the book of Job itself. Tonight, I'd like to take verse 10 really as the, the main thought. Let me read that again. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. The purifying process. That's our thought tonight. The purifying process. That's what Job, in a sense, went through. It's something that we all go through as Christians. Uh, we are pure, of course, in standing and sight of God. The moment that we are saved, this is a, a message more for people who are already Christians tonight. The process that the Lord takes us through to, to try us, to grow us, to build us, to purify us, to slough off those impurities that we shall indeed come forth as gold. Let's take a moment and pray uh, that the Lord will help us tonight. Father, we come before your word again this evening. And our Heavenly Father, as we, as we come before you as the saved of the Lord Jesus Christ, we know that while we're perfect in your sight and perfect in Christ, we live in an imperfect world. We also, Lord, when we walk in this flesh, live imperfect lives. And Father, there are times of trial, there are times of testing, there are times of difficulty. But it helps if we recognize that we know that you know us and see us. We are in your purifying process. We know that all things work together for good. For those that love you, those who are called according to your purpose. It's a promise easy to claim in the good times, but uh, Heavenly Father, it's doubly true in the difficult times. Father, I pray you bless your people by your word tonight. Help me, give me clear thinking again. Fill me with your spirit, Lord. Help me to bless the people who've come out on a Sunday evening, Lord. That's unusual in this world. That's unusual even for Christians today. But they've come faithfully, Lord, and I pray that if I fall short, God, give them something. I ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 
Amen. Well, don't turn there, but just think as I read two verses that would be uh, familiar to you tonight. The first is Hebrews chapter 13 and verse number five. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things of you, as you have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Let me read you another verse, Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even uh, unto the end of the world. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. We know these things to be true theologically, don't we? We know these truths to be true doctrinally. Have you ever doubted them experientially? I think it's probably true for all Christians. I think there are times we would look at these verses and say, you've promised never to leave me or forsake me, but where are you, Lord? I can't find you. You've promised to be with me all the way, even until the end of the world, but Lord, I, all I can see is darkness. Out there. All I can see is emptiness. You may say, I've never felt like that as a Christian. Job felt like that. It can happen. And maybe it's not something you've experienced at the moment. You may experience, I, I would go so far as to say, if the Lord leaves us on this earth long enough, you will experience times of great difficulty in your life. You may be experiencing times of great difficulty in your life right now. That's an absolute possibility. And you may be the only person that knows them. And as we look here at Job's example tonight, if you look at Job's life tonight, was, would anyone doubt that Job was in a time of deep distress? If you're not familiar with, with Job, let me tell you, Job was called a perfect and an upright man. Job chapter 1 and verse 1. That's God's testimony of Job, a perfect and an upright man. So we can write off from ourselves any thought that is possible. You know, Job, Job must have been suffering because he'd done something wrong against God. That was Job's testimony of him. Job was a true server of the Lord. Job was a true worshipper of the Lord. Daily he worshipped the Lord. Daily he made offerings on behalf of his children just in case they might do something wrong. Truly was a man who knew the Lord. He just experienced, if you're familiar with Job and if you're not, then this will give you an overview. He just experienced the death of multiple members of his family, his children. Job had just experienced the loss of his business and his livelihood. Job was beset by a serious, painful and irritating and persistent medical condition. He was not a well man at all. Lost his property. And to top all of that, just as he thought he saw help coming over the horizon, he saw his three friends coming in his time of need, and he thought, okay, life is bad, the family are dead, I've lost my business, I've lost my livelihood, house is flattened, I'm in a terrible state with this painful condition, but my three friends, Job's three comforters, came over the horizon, and he probably thought, they will come and help me. Could Job have been more wrong as he saw them approaching? Now, remember, they had never seen within Job obvious sin. They had never even suspected in Job's life that he was a committer of some secret sin. They had never seen sin present in the life of Job. But because of the evidence of the circumstances, because of what had happened to Job, Job's three comforters determined that to their mind, he must have been a sinner offending God. They could come to no other conclusion because the circumstances were clearly such that God must have been judging Job for his unrighteousness. With friends like that who needs enemies. I think you could say things were certainly not going Job's way. I think that would be safe to say that. <laughs> Can I ask you tonight, have you ever felt like that? Christian, have you ever felt like things just are not going 
your way. And maybe you, you too have looked over the horizon at your friends or your Christian brothers or sisters and thought, well, here comes help. And whether they say it or whether they don't, they kind of like, well, you're in this mess because you must be doing something wrong. The circumstances, God must be judging you. You've got some sin that you must confess and you found no comfort with them. So I want to look at three things tonight from the faith of Job, from these verses before us that may give you some comfort, may give you some strength in a time of need. First thing, may I say, as we come to verse number 10, the first part of the verse says, but he referring to God, but he knoweth the way that I take. Can we say tonight first that Job was resolved, resolute. Job was resolved. He was resolved that no matter what, God knew exactly what Job was going through. God was not isolated from him. God had not departed from him. And it would be easy to forgive Job for thinking that was the case because we see in verse 8, behold, I go forward, but he is not there. And backward, but I cannot perceive him. Job said, in the time of my deepest trouble, I could not see God. Maybe that's a position you've been in or are in. Life is manting up, problems are boiling, and you think, I go backwards, I go forwards. I know of God. I know these promises. He'll never leave me nor forsake me. You're with me all the way, even into the end of the world, but I go backward and I go forward, and I can't see God. I can't see God at work in my life. I can't find God. Not only that, he says in verse 9, on the left hand where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand that I cannot see him. Job was resolved that he couldn't see God and he couldn't touch God. He couldn't tangibly find the touch of God. I think we could safely say that backwards and forwards and up and down and all around, Job felt that he could not experience the presence of God. And maybe you've been through times like that in your life. And it would be easy to say, I'm in the toughest time that I've ever been in. Maybe as tough as Job, or maybe tougher, or maybe not as tough, but to you, it's serious. And maybe you've searched up and down and back and forth, and maybe you've put your hand out looking for the treasures of the darkness and it's come back empty, and you feel that the Lord is nowhere to be found. Then like Job, you must be resolved. Because Job said, but he knoweth the way that I take. You see, Job was resolved that regardless of how he felt, regardless of what was happening in his life, he knew of a certainty the truth that if Job could not behold God, he knew that God was beholding him. He knew that if he couldn't see and touch God, God could see and touch Job. And friends, I can say to you on the authority of the word of God that sometimes God will put you in that position to see how you do. He did it with Hezekiah. Just turn to Second Chronicles. Good King Hezekiah, wonderful king. Second Chronicles chapter 32 and uh, verse 30 and 31, where we're just looking at a summation, if you will, a summary of Hezekiah's life. We're just looking at a part of that summary. Second Chronicles chapter 32, verse number 30. The Bible says, the same Hezekiah also stopped the upper water. Because give some testimony of some of the great things that Hezekiah did. The same Hezekiah also stopped the water course of Gihon and brought it straight down to the west side of the city of David. And Hezekiah prospered in all his works. Remember, Hezekiah d- dug that water waterway. That's still there. It's excavated. It's archaeologically available today. It was an incredible way of getting water in at times of siege. Anyway, I don't want to digress. But it's a, you know, this king Hezekiah did some great things before the Lord. But look at verse 31. How be it? Oh, it's, it's always dreadful when you read but or how be it. That means in spite of that, in the business of the ambassadors of the princes of Babylon. Now, you, you may remember that or you may not. But the princes of Babylon, well, um, 
uh, the, the, the war and the besieging and the, and, uh, or, or the, the difficult times were coming, they sent out princes ambassadors to Hezekiah to get information out of him that he should have kept to himself. It says, Had be in the business of the ambassadors of the princes of Babylon who sent unto him to inquire of the wonder that was done in the land. They were trying to find out some stuff. Look at these next verse words in the verse. God left him to try him that he might know all that was in his heart. God left Hezekiah to his own devices in that situation to try his heart. Job said, I went backwards, I went forwards, I looked on my right and I looked on my left. I couldn't see God, I couldn't touch God, I couldn't feel God. But what was the conclusion? Job was still resolved that God was looking over him. God knoweth the way that I take. He knew that God saw him. Job was resolved. He couldn't see God, he couldn't touch God, but he didn't doubt God. Quite incredible, isn't it? You need to be resolved if you're in a time of trouble. Secondly, we see tonight that not only in this purifying process was Job resolved, Job was resigned. Look at the second part of verse number 10. He knoweth the way that I take, Job was resolved, when he hath tried me. Job was resigned. That doesn't mean he'd given up. But Job was resigned to the fact that God was perfectly justified in trying him, in testing him. Job was resigned to that truth. God knows me. I can't find him. I can't touch him. I can't see him. But I know he's there and he knows me. And I know that I'm going through a trial that will be for my benefit, blessing, and for the glory of God. And I know that it will come to an end at the other side when he hath tried me, when this test, when this trial, when this trouble is over. And in it all, Job was resigned firstly to keep God's way. Look at verse 11. In this time of testing and trial, Job says, my foot hath held his steps. His way have I kept and not declined. Job said this time of trial, this time of testing will not put me off the path. We talked about those false teachers this morning, swerved and turned, crashed and burned. Job said, regardless now, it's so easy to say this, but this is real history. Job's children were dead. Job's business, gone. House, flattened. Head to foot, covered in some kind of monkeypox, but worse. Friends that were more of a burden than a blessing. Empty, he felt before God. Yet he said, I will not be moved. Just like Paul. As for me, Paul said, Acts 20, none of these things move me. And look what Paul had been through. Look what Job had been through. And he said, I have kept the right way. I will continue to walk in the path of the Lord no matter what comes my way. Though he slay me. Job said, didn't he? Though he slay me. And Job said, I'm going to go the right direction. It doesn't matter if I can sense God, feel God, see God. I know God sees me, and I will walk the right way. Though he slay me, he'll have to kill me. But he'll kill me and find me walking in the right direction. Nothing will put me off course. Job was resigned to keep going the right direction on the right path, regardless. To keep God's way, but also to keep God's word. Look at verse number 12. Said, I'm going to walk right, I am going to live right. What was it based on? Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed, counted most valuable, the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Job said, I'm not only going to keep God's way, I'm going to keep God's words. Do you know what Job was saying? God said it, it's true, I will live it. And what God said doesn't make it any less true because my circumstances are bad. 
What God called me to do, how God called me to live, does not change because my circumstances are bad. Job, Job said, I am resolved that God is there and God knows me even when I can't feel him. I am resigned that I will live right, walk right, believe right, believe the book. And I am resigned to do that no matter what I see around me, no matter what comes my way. Christian, it's, it's not a wrong thing to feel alone at times. It's not a wrong thing to feel in a time of trouble and a time of trial. God will try you. What is wrong is to go the wrong direction, thinking that God has left you. He has not. To think that these trials surely uh, upon you must mean there is no God. No, that is wrong thinking. That is what the devil wants you to do. Hezekiah was told that God left him to, to see his heart, to test his heart. When times of trial come upon us, God is seeing what is their heart. How does the rubber hit the road? How, how, how does the, the life match with the lips? How will they do? Sometimes you must say, I, I, I failed. I had less than Job and I've done worse than Job. I had nothing of the trials of Job and I didn't stay in the way and I wandered off the path and I doubted the words of God and I couldn't see God and I just got off on the wrong track. So what should I do then? Get right. If you got wrong, get right. If you went the wrong way, go the wrong way. Go the right way. If you said, I can't see God, remember, he can see you. So I don't even know if I know God. He knows you if you're his. And God wants to see, will you do the right thing regardless? Will you go the right way regardless? Just go to uh, John. Chapter 6, John chapter 6. You know, this. there's no new thing under the sun, right? This was a similar situation, a similar test and a trial that was put upon those who claimed to be the disciples of Christ while Christ walked the face of the earth. John chapter 6 and verse 66, 666. And is it interesting in verse 666? We see the um, anti-Christian exodus. John chapter 6, verse 66. Well, let me read 65 by way of introduction. And this is the Lord speaking. He said, therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. From that time, many, I got that circled, highlighted in my Bible. From that time, many, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, will you also go away? Will you go the same way as the others? Will you go the wrong way? Will you go backwards? Is it not working out well for you? And the same resolve and resignation that was in Job we see in Simon Peter. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. So what's that? Simon Peter, the twelve, they were resolved. They were resigned. You see, their faith in following Christ wasn't based in others and which direction others went. Their faith in following Christ wasn't based in good or bad circumstances. Their faith in Christ wasn't based in prosperity. Their faith in Christ was based in the fact we believe and are sure that thou art the Son, the Christ, the Son of the living God. You see, every one of us has to be sure and certain. Every one of us, like Job, Old Testament, or the 12 in the New, have to be resolved and resigned. The carnal or cultural Christian is happy to profess and testify in the day of prosperity, but are nowhere to be found in the day of adversity. And that is the truth of it. But Job did not doubt the goodness of God and he did not measure the goodness of God based upon the circumstances in his life. Job measured the goodness of God based upon the goodness of God. Because God is not to be measured by our life and circumstances. God is to be measured by who he is and who he is revealed to be and he changeth not. Your circumstances, my circumstances, they will change. But God changeth 
not. Sometimes our circumstances will be good. It doesn't make God any gooder than he is. Sometimes our circumstances will be bad, and it still doesn't make God any less good than he is. Job was resolved. Job was resigned. And friends, as we come back to Job 23 and verse 10, but he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as God. Job was rejoicing. He knew that God's tempting, testing, and trying was a part of the purifying process of his life. I shall come forth as gold, gold of precious metal, measured by carats. And that's all down to how pure the gold is. The higher the carat value, the higher the purity, the higher the value. Job says, I, I, I don't doubt God is there. I'm staying in the way, even when I can't sense it. I know God is trying me. I know this is a test. I know this is a difficult period in life, but it too shall end. And when it does, I shall, no doubt whatsoever. I shall, future tense, I shall come through it. And I shall come forth as what? Gold, as something valuable for the Lord. I stood the test. I stood the trial. I stood the test of my faith and the impurities of my life will be burnt off. And if you're familiar with the book of Job, he came through. He started a perfect and an upright man. Job was already gold. But boy, oh boy, by the end of the book of Job, what was he then? So valuable. Job was rejoicing. Why? I shall come forth as gold. He knew God's way was the better way. Look at verse 14. For he performeth the thing that is appointed for me. And many such things are with him. Do you know God's there in the bad times as well as the good times? Do you, do you know that? I mean, I don't mean do you know that because the scriptures say I mean, do you know that? Do you know that of a truth within your very bowels and being? That you are where you are and God has not left you on your own. He performeth the thing that is appointed for me. Now you can say, I, I don't understand why God appointed that for Job. I don't understand why God allowed that to happen to Job, a perfect and an upright man. And I would quite happily say, neither do I. But I'm not God. I just know the end was better than the beginning. It started well and it got really bad really, really quickly. And it stayed bad for a long time. And then God blessed him with twice what he had before. And the great lessons that we can learn are quite incredible. But if you boil it down to the fact and say, why did God do that? I have no idea. But Job didn't doubt. He said, he performeth the thing that is appointed for me. I'm no different to the rest of you. I'm happy to moan and whinge and whine and why this and this should change and this isn't right and I can't see the end from the beginning. Don't believe me, ask the one who was doing it yesterday. You know why we got this message tonight? She said, Job 23.10. Shut me right up, I can tell you. That's why we got this message tonight. It's for me. Keep telling you, my wife's a spiritual one, you know that. He knew God's way was better, verse 14. I'll tell you what, he would not get bitter. Look at verse 16. For God maketh my heart soft, and the Almighty troubleth me. You know what trouble will do with you in your Christian life? It will stop you getting hard. You know, I was talking about dogmatism this morning. There's a good version and a bad version. When your heart gets hard, you get a bad version of dogmatism. And you know what God will do sometimes? He'll just allow enough trouble just to soften that thing right off again. Therefore, am I troubled at his presence when I consider I am afraid of him? God will just give you enough trouble sometimes just to try you and just to soften that old heart. Job knew, and we should know that God's way is better. Job knew that we should not get bitter. Because our hope is not in our circumstances. Our hope is in Christ and our circumstances. What's that old saying? What doesn't kill you will make you stronger. 
Well, that's really a summation of the whole of the book of Job. He came out better at the end than he did in the beginning. And others around him died, but Job didn't, and he came out stronger, and he came out better, and he came out blessed. Now, I find that thing so hard to figure out, but you know what? I read these words and I realize what great faith Job had. What incredible faith Job had. Now, some of you in this room tonight have been through far worse circumstances, far more heartbreaking circumstances than I ever yet have. And, and I could stand here and we could measure our experiences and yours would trump mine. Therefore, I could not say, I know how you feel. I felt the same way. Here's, here's what I found. I couldn't trump it with experience and wisdom from my life. But I can open the book of Job and say, was it worse than this? Did all your children die? Did you lose all your income? Were you covered from head to foot in painful boil, some kind of box? And to top it, all your friends came and they just piled on the grief and the agony. Was, was it worse than Job? Because chances are probably wasn't. And even if it was, the same still applies. Job realized he was going through a purifying process. He didn't end up like some kind of crazy man and go, yeah, it's all good. Kids are dead. It's all good. God's great. Lost my business, all good, God's great. No, no, he, he really bad of his life for a season. Job, if you will, I know he's not a Christian, but Job was a real Christian, not a crazy Christian. Job says it's bad. Job says, I'm mourning. Job says, I'm in terrible. I wish I'd never been born, Job said. The truth of feelings are acknowledged in the book of Job. Yet when it comes to all of that, when he said, I'd rather have never been born, I'd rather have not even existed, that's how bad this is. But God is still God. That's incredible faith, isn't it? Incredible faith. So I just say to you tonight, I, I don't know where you are in the purifying process. I don't know what you're going through. I know some of the things you have been through, some of the things some of you are going through. But I know this, you will go through some things if the Lord leaves us. Here long enough. But I hope you can say, like Job, in the midst of it all, when you can't see the end from the beginning and you've no idea why what's happening to you is what's happening, Job said, but he knoweth the way that I take. And when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as God. You see, the beginning and the middle are not the end. And the end is good. And the end is guaranteed. So may the Lord help us to keep our focus on our God who changeth not, on our God who is not dependent upon the circumstances, on our God who does not leave us even in the worst of circumstances because we are in the purifying process and ultimately we shall come forth as gold. We shall meet our Saviour. We shall be with him in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord and we shall be as he is, the Bible says. And we behold our Saviour face to face. Friend, I'm not belittling the trials, the troubles, and the tragedies of this world. That's the whole point of the book of Job. It, it doesn't go down this route of some crazy Christians. Oh, oh well, bless God. Yeah. Maybe little trauma and difficulty and grief. That's nonsense. The very rawness of the trials of this life are given out in the book of Job. But above it all, our God sits, our God is good, and Job acknowledges that he is the only place where there is any hope, and there is always hope in the Lord. And praise God for a man such as Job. May the Lord help us to keep our confidence in Christ, not be directed by our circumstances. Father, we thank you for your great servant, Job. A man, Lord, upon whom the world fell in when he was testified to be a perfect and an upright man. But he is a man, Lord, you testified he was perfect and upright, and he is a man who through it all testified how perfect you were through it all. 
He lost sight of you and you never lost sight of him. When he didn't cleave to you, you cleaved to him. Father, you brought him through and you blessed him. He stayed on the path. He stayed on the track. He was resolved. He was resigned. And ultimately, he was rejoicing. Why, God and our Father, I pray if there be any in here tonight, Lord, any going through a time of trial and testing, that they would stay on the right path or get on the right path, that they too would be resolved, resigned, and ultimately rejoicing because the trials of this world will come and do come. The circumstances of our life change. Help us to cling to an unchanging Saviour, to the unchanging promises and truth of your word that we too may walk the right path, even through wrong times. May we trust in Christ, our great Saviour. Thank you, Lord, for these examples of truth that you give us in the Bible, these examples of great and godly character. Father, strengthen us, we pray, for these days and the days ahead. Help us, O oh Lord, to testify of our great Redeemer. Though we slay me, yet shall I live. When I'm tried, I shall come forth as gold. Help us to hang on to the great promise and the great presence of our Saviour. Help us to know intrinsically and truthfully that which we know theologically. Help us to know it experientially. We pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen.